Okay. Welcome. So, are you ready for this? Yes. Yeah. All right. So, well, I'm Fred Forgy, director of the program. Uh, most of you have had contact with me or with Matt Wofsting, who is the associate director of the program, who's not here today. Um, but hopefully, you're in the right place and you are excited about the program. We've got a lot of really interesting things that we're going to be doing over the course of this year um, and a lot of opportunities for you. So what I'm going to do is sort of jump into a couple of different things and kind of get us started. One of the things I ask you guys to do is take a look at the class roll that I printed up here. This has all of our students on it, both the continuing students as well as the new students. Those of you that are in this room are all brand new, okay? We didn't invite the continuing students to the orientation. So what I've done is I've listed out which courses everyone is registered in so you can kind of get a sense for, you know, who is in your class, whether they're full-time, part-time, that sort of thing. Um, so kind of, if you would, you know, take a look at that list and get to know the other folks sort of in the program over the course of the day. Hopefully you get to meet everyone that's here and get a, a chance to get familiar with them. Now, one of the things I want to sort of start with is to hand out the schedule, okay? Do I have a copy of this? Yes. All right, or the calendar as I've called it here. So what this does is it gives you sort of a day-by-day -day breakdown of which classes are meeting on which days, where holidays are, that sort of thing. So that you can kind of go ahead and pre-plan your schedule and make sure that you're where you need to be. Now, having said that, one of the things that is in the process of being changed is the room. So you're going to probably get an email from me sometime this week with the room change for the classroom. We're trying to get a spot on the first floor of the building in room 1133. Um, currently, I think we're scheduled somewhere on the second floor. So um, just wait until you get that email from me. And while I'm on the topic of emails, all of you obviously have been given uh, a Nova email account. Please, please get that linked up, synced up with whatever sort of phone or device that you use to look at your emails because virtually every single communication that we're going to be sending you is going to that email address. And so if you, you know, don't have it set up that way, you're going to miss a lot of information, okay? Pretty much every critical piece of information, whether it's the course syllabi, whether it's opportunities that are going to come available for conferences, you know, scholarships, everything goes to that email. That is to be really the only email address that we use, okay? Even though you may have one that's a Yahoo address or Gmail that is your preferred, you probably need to get the Nova one forwarded somehow, okay? And I can't stress that enough, okay? Now, let's take a look here at the schedule real quick. You'll notice the, the times on these are 8 o'clock to 5 o'clock, okay? It's a brutal schedule, no question about it. But the way that most of our courses are structured is that we tend to try to do a lot of the really, what I would call heavy lifting, heavy thinking, and that sort of thing, kind of in the morning, and then tend to reserve the afternoons for a bit more of the application side, okay? Whether it's guest speakers, site visits, that sort of thing. Doesn't always work out that way, but that's the intention, okay? To try to sort of set it up that way. You'll also notice that, you know, if you do the math, that eight to five is actually how many hours? Nine. Okay, and right next to that it says contact hours, seven and a half. Now the reason I do that is to give the instructors and you a little bit of flexibility on the schedule. That meaning that each individual instructor can potentially start the class a little bit later than eight o'clock or finish a little bit earlier than five o'clock in the evening. I would suspect most people would prefer to finish earlier. And one of the ways that we um, can do that, you take a little bit of a shorter lunch, and probably get out of here maybe by 4 o'clock in the afternoon, depending on the situation, okay? But you need to go ahead and budget for being here through 5 o'clock just in case, okay? Does that make sense, everybody? Yep. Yeah. Okay? Now, you'll also notice that pretty much each of, of these courses in this first half of the fall semester, they only meet four times. So if you miss a class, that's a problem, okay? But 
to try to help you out as much as we can with that. If you do miss, you know, by virtue of being sick, you've got to go out of town on business, there's you know, some sort of extenuating circumstance, we record every single course, okay? Every single lecture. And what we do is we pop them up on YouTube. We have our own YouTube channel, the MSRED channel. If you go and just simply type into YouTube, MSRED space R-E-E, -E, it will pull up our channel, okay? And you'll notice, literally, there are hundreds of videos that are on this site that we've been recording for about a year. So literally, we pretty much have the entire inventory of courses up there for you to be able to, to see the videos. But obviously, with each week, we update that information as the class takes place. Now, the one thing we don't obviously videotape is site visits, okay? Because if we're out there in the field, I mean, you know, trying to jockey around with a camera is probably not gonna be the easiest thing in the world to do. So, but we do videotape everything that goes on in the, the traditional classroom. Okay, everybody cool with that? All right, now, a uh, couple of other things we need to mention about the schedule. You'll notice whenever you signed up for classes, um, if you are signed up for the Real Estate Development Strategy course, which is my course, the Real Estate 5898, um, it's in the second half of the fall semester. That course is listed as an online course. It is not an online course. You're saying, well, why then is it listed as an online course? And the, the, the simple explanation is because the way this course is sort of set up and the way that it's done doesn't fit within the normal parameters of how the schedule system will allow it. Because there's a couple of things that you have options on with this course. We start off with the in-class portion. Those three days that are highlighted there, October 31st, November 14th, and December 12th, the plan for each of those three days is for us to have panel discussions with members of our advisory board and other members in the real estate development community to come into class, talk about a wide variety of subjects, and ultimately what you're going to be responsible for doing is kind of taking notes on those sort of panel discussions, asking questions, and then you're gonna be writing up a written blog about those topics and those speakers, okay? In addition to that, you then have an opportunity to do a couple of different things. One is to participate in our international study tour, okay? Which I've given you a, a sheet about that, which is where we will pay for, um, effectively, you to go on this study tour, which is, in uh, early December on a carnival cruise ship. At first, it sounds like it's going to be a vacation. It is not, okay? <laughs> if you look at the, the schedule, what you will see is, you know, a pretty hefty amount of meetings. So each of the locations that we're going to be going to, Key West, Cozumel, and Grand Canyon, we have site visits, guest speakers, folks that we meet with all day while we're there. And then on the ship, you're not just running around and having a party, we actually are having class those days on the ship as well, okay? Now, um, part of this is to give you an opportunity to sort of experience different aspects of real estate development, specifically sustainability, okay? As it relates to different um, ways of dealing with water, okay? that each of those locations has their own unique situations of development as it relates to obtaining water to actually survive. Also, issues related to power generation, issues you know, related to ultimately differences in government entities. You've got three different types of government. You've got a U.S. government in Key West, a Mexican government in Cozumel, and obviously Grand Cayman, more of a British sort of type of government system. So, real opportunity to get to see a wide variety of, of different development types, okay? Now, with that, as I said, we are going to pay for your cost of going on that trip, assuming, once again, double occupancy within a room, um, and you simply, you know, obviously have to participate in terms of, uh, of going if you choose to do so. It is not a requirement. Now, another option, if you are not able to do that, is there is a conference coming up in late October. Another handout here. 
VUOI Latin America conference. So uh, what we're going to do is we are going to pay for up to nine of our students to go to this conference. Now if you take a look at the cost of this conference that we're taking care of for you, the cost is about $675 per person if you're a student. So we're covering that cost if you want to go up for up to nine people. So that's another option that would be available to you to successfully complete the real estate development strategy course. And what you would be doing both with that conference as well as with the study tour is much like the in-day class sessions with um, the panel discussions, you're going to be keeping record of the people that are speaking and that you're meeting with at these conferences and writing it up as part of a written blog. Okay, does that make sense to everybody? Yes. So you've got some options there, is what I'm saying, okay? Um, now, you're saying, okay, I can't make this conference, I can't make the study tour, what else do you have? Well, that is gonna have to be handled kind of on a one-on-one -on -one basis, okay? In terms of trying to get you set up with potentially another professional conference, hopefully here somewhere within the Florida area that we would take care of once again, the conference registration cost and that sort of thing. Okay? So it makes sense to everybody. Okay? Any questions about that? Yeah, you can't do both. It's an option. <sighs> Don't ask that. It is possible. It is possible to do both. Okay? And we will talk about that on a case-by-case -case basis. I want you, all of you, to get the most you possibly can out of the program and literally, you know, suck the marrow out of the, the you know, the opportunities that are available. But we do have limited resources. So what we're going to have to do is just sort of take a look at what we can afford to do. And if there is enough money, we'll do it. And we'll allow that. Okay? Other questions? Okay. I so, is there an option, or a little misunderstood, but is there an option to take the class traditionally, lecture? Well, that is the, everyone is required to be there on that, those lecture days. Okay. That is a requirement. The additional part that's optional is which one of whether you do the conference or you do the study tour or you do a third option of some other conference. Okay. The, the, the whole mindset behind that is we're trying to push you out there to give you opportunities that are going to help you. Okay? It's not just to force you to go to a conference to force you to go to a conference or force you to go on a study tour just to force you to go on a study tour. It's about giving you exposure to as many different people and experiences as possible so that hopefully you know those are going to be useful that's the idea isn't there a presentation at the end and a research paper is that the same well, class, or? that is where the written blog comes into play oh, okay. yeah and we'll, we'll talk more about that obviously whenever we get into that course and all the the intricate details of it but right now we'll just kind of scratch the surface okay, okay. Um, the other couple of things to sort of point out, there are two fully online courses um, that are actually online courses, and those are listed down there in that bottom part of the fall two semester, the market and feasibility analysis course and the real estate development an analysis software course. Now, one of the reasons why these courses are online is they tend to have a fair amount of software applications associated with them. And what we have found in the program is trying to teach software programs in a traditional face-to-face -face environment is not an easy task because everyone is at different levels of skill. I mean, imagine we're trying to teach you how to create an Excel spreadsheet and there's 20 or 30 of you in a classroom. Some of you are Excel masters, others of you maybe have never opened Excel in your life. And so what we do with the online courses is any sort of videos that the instructor has are recorded and you can effectively go back, watch what they do to sort of that way kind of work at your own pace. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So there is some method to the madness there. Okay. Now, um, okay. So any questions about the actual schedule itself? Does that make sense to everybody? Okay. Good. All right. Let's move on. The next. If for registration tip. As you might know, the schedule of classes, you have to route through online versus ground at main campus. So that's that's been a little tricky point with the new calendar changes. So I, if I may just inject yeah. a helpful hint to make sure to look in online as well as the main campus right. offerings for real estate. 
And what will typically happen is every single semester, either Matt Rothstein or myself will be sending you an email with what do you need to register for, okay? And so like with the fall semester, one thing to sort of point out is you don't have to have registered right this minute for fall two. You can wait a little while. If you've already registered for fall two, don't drop, okay? That's not what I'm saying. But you can wait a little while until probably early October, I think it is. The Sunday before class starts is yeah. the absolute deadline. So as an example, those of you that are maybe only registered for this first half of the semester and you're trying to get a sense of well, what's the workload like and, and that sort of thing, um, then the, the, the second half of the semester, you may say, well, I'm gonna pick up another class or, or you know, as you sort of kind of get into things. Now, one thing I do wanna point out as it relates to the classes, you know, we've got about 15 different courses in this degree program. Every single one of those courses and the instructors associated with those courses is different, okay? And what I mean by that is that some of the courses are exceedingly calculation-based, okay? It's all about the numbers, like the real estate finance course and the real estate accounting course, okay? But then other courses, like the real estate law course and the land use law course, no numbers whatsoever, all about reading, okay? And kind of understanding the material. And then you have other courses, like the development course, that's a blend of both. A lot of reading, a lot of calculations. So, you know, that's the thing that you, you know, kind of need to be, you know, sort of thinking about whenever you're going into these courses and you're saying, well, maybe my first course, you know, just totally blows me away, but then this other course, maybe not so much, you know? So there's a, there's a wide variety, okay, is my point. And you need to be cognizant of that whenever you're going through the individual courses and, and um, thinking about the content and thinking about the, um, the things that are covered and the things that are required. Some courses have no test. Some are purely project-based courses. Some courses are only tests, okay? Some courses are a combination of a paper and a test. So every single course is different, okay? All right. Now, one of the things I want to, to talk about that's extremely important within our program is the Executive Mentor Program, okay? Another one of your handouts. This is one of the absolute, you know, incredible things about our program is that we have a number of executive level commercial real estate focused folks that have signed on to mentor every single student within the program, okay? And what we mean by that is that these folks are saying we're willing to meet one-on-one -on, -one on a regular basis throughout the program. Typically, once a month, you either have a face-to-face -face meeting, a phone call, a set of email exchanges, but everything that they can do to potentially help you out with your career, okay? They're not there for you to go to and say, hey, give me a job. That's not their purpose, okay? Their purpose is really to kind of help you kind of in a very, you know, one-on-one -on -one sort of way um, think about your career, think about the directions that you want to go, and hopefully they are folks that have similar backgrounds to what your actual career interests are. That, for example, if your interest is retail, real estate, then we would probably pair you up with Gloria Fernandez, who that is her focus, okay? You know, if your focus is going to be on, you know, a wide variety of commercial development, Harry Styles is the guy. If you're, you know, interested in sort of townhome development, Harry Posen is the person. You know, so you know, as you begin to kind of think about what area of interest you have, we're going to try to help pair you up with the best possible person that will hopefully help facilitate your career. Now, this little handout kind of goes through the details of how all this works. So, what we will be doing is. Actually, there's specific dates, I think, on the back page here. Okay, obviously today, August the 22nd, I'm kind of giving you a little bit of an overview. But on October 1st, we open up an online application. It will probably be a, a survey that we will send out to you via email um, to, to kind of help to express what your interests are and who you might want to be paired with. Um, then you'll have until October the 15th to effectively 
put in your request for a specific mentor or um, kind of your priority list, if you will. And then we will match you up by October 24th. And then um, from that point forward, it's up to you to communicate and stay in contact with that mentor. Now, my experience has been with this program, some people jump into this full force and take full advantage of it, okay? And meet with these folks as often as they possibly can. Other folks, it, it, just, it amazes me that they maybe, they'll send an initial email, they might meet with them once, and that's it. You know, and that's a shame. But, you know, you really need to take advantage of this opportunity. These are extremely well-connected and accomplished folks that, you know, really do have a lot to offer, and it's up to you to take advantage of that and to make the connection with them. Okay? Any questions on that? Would we have a good CV on each of those? Yeah, and, and all of our advisory board members are on our website. That if you go to the website and specifically look at the advisory board, here is a listing of the current members of our advisory board. We have other folks that we pull in as well that are not specifically on the advisory board. But for each of these folks, if you click on their name, it'll pull up their bio. Okay? Okay, any other questions? Yes? Okay, but it says here that eligibility is a successful completion of one semester. Yep, so what I am defining as one semester is fall one. Okay, so that after fall one is over, the grades are in for the, the, the two courses that are being offered in fall one, the development course and the land use um, law course. Once those grades are in, if you have a 3.0 or higher, then you are eligible, okay? If not, then you will not be starting the mentorship program at that time until you have reached a 3.0, okay? Now, you have to have a 3.0 to continue in the program, and you have to have a 3.0 to graduate from the program. So in terms of grades, this is something you really need to think about because the way the grading scale works here is a B, a letter grade of B is a 3.0, but a B minus is a 2.7, okay? So if your thought is, I wanna you know, do the minimum amount and, and get a, a B minus, or you know, that's gonna be okay, it's not okay, okay? You really need to be striving to get, obviously, a B or higher in each of the courses that, that you're taking. If you get a B minus or a C plus or a C, that's gonna bring your GPA down really quick. Okay, so please be aware of that. Okay. Um, okay, other questions about the mentorship program? All right. Uh, let's see. Now, one of the things that I sent out was a survey, um, I guess a, a couple of weeks ago, and then I think over the past couple of weeks, some of you have, have also gotten it from, it was a Survey Monkey uh, survey. Most of you, I think, have filled it out. Um, and one of the things I asked about on there was whether or not you wanted Nova business cards, okay? And so what we'll be doing is, if you want them, we will be providing those to you. And actually, those of you that responded to the survey early will probably have those business cards for you next week, okay? Uh, the, the business cards, the purpose of those is that whenever you're going to these different conferences or you're going to the different receptions or the different meetings that we have, and you're wanting to effectively um, you know, help to market yourself, those are an excellent way to, to sort of, because it's, it's amazing the people that will open up to you and talk with you and, and work with you if they know your students. They don't see you as a threat, okay? If you are coming in as, I am Mr. and Mrs. You know, developer, representing a development company, they may see you as a threat. You follow? Mm -hmm. Okay, so there's this whole thing of being a student that has its advantages. And so, you know, that's one of the reasons why we're, we're, we're doing this with the business cards. So um, if you haven't responded to the survey, please do so. And, and um, that would be one of the, the, the key things to make sure that you uh, mark down. Also, um, one of the things that we are doing, all of the software that we're going to be using in the program, we're paying the tab on. Okay, so like the Argus developer, Argus DCF, you know, each of those, we're picking up the tab. We're also um, getting subscription to Reese, which Mark Trone will talk about here in a little bit, um, which is an information database about 
um, a wide variety of sort of market characteristics um, for not only Broward, but also Palm Beach and Miami-Dade. Um, it's actually it's costing us several thousands of dollars to have access to this database and it is wonderful real-time information. We will also be giving you um, a student access to um, other databases as well throughout the program, but that is a, is a big one that we're launching um, uh, this semester, okay? Let's see, a couple other things here. Um, those of you who do not have a PC-based laptop, okay? If you have a Mac, that's not gonna work. You're gonna need a PC to run the software, okay, that we have affiliated with this program. And one of the things in the survey asked you, do you need one? And what we'll do is, once I get all the responses, then I will go out, we'll, I'll purchase some laptops, and we will distribute those to you to be able to use while you're in the program. Now, they will be returned to us whenever you complete the program, but that will at least be a way that you will be able to um, run the software programs that we're gonna be using in the classroom. Okay, make sense, everybody? Okay, Let's see other things here. Um, now one of the things that you will also be needing for your program is a financial calculator. Now, I have a personal preference for the, the Hewlett Packard 10B2, okay? Um, a couple of our instructors who happen to be in the room, Professor Sam Miguel and Professor Trowin, um, come from a little bit of a different generation, um, and their calculator of choice is the uh, HP 12. See. So uh, uh, we, they can talk about that a little bit whenever they get a chance to sort of come up here and, and discuss about things. But um, we will uh, potentially, if you uh, need a calculator, we will make one available to you um, if need be. Uh, also, there are a couple of iPhone apps that will actually simulate or emulate both the HP um, 10B as well as the um, 12C, okay? And these calculators, this one specifically, I think is about, you get it on Amazon, about 13 bucks. So it's not exactly a high-priced item, okay? Um, books would be another thing to sort of talk about. Now, in the syllabi, online, you can go online and you can see a version of class syllabi. Let me be clear on this. The version that you see online whenever you go into uh, WebStar or whatever the portal to, to view your um, class information and it says click here for the syllabus, that syllabus is a generic syllabus. It is not the full completed syllabus that the instructors will be providing you with. Okay, does that make sense to everybody, yes or no? Yes. Okay, now what that syllabus will have that is useful is it will tell you what is the textbook that has been selected for that course so that you can then either go to the bookstore or order the books online. Now in the case of Professor San Miguel, the book that he's gonna be using I believe in the, uh, uh, Capital, the, Market. yeah, the Capital Markets course is currently out of print. It is not available at the bookstore. It is only available online through Amazon. So um, make sure that you, know, you are aware of that. So if you can't find it in the bookstore or if you just want to purchase your books online, um, we've provided you with the information that hopefully will allow you to do that, okay? Not every course will require a book, okay? For example, the real estate development strategy that you'll be taking with me in the second half doesn't have a book. All of the other courses, I think this semester, do have a book. And specifically, if we kind of um, Run down, I think, Mark, you've got uh, the book there for the professional real estate development. Uh, I'll leave it higher when I speak. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and then the, the one that is my personal favorite, the smallest book probably in the program, The Land Use in a Nutshell, um, that was going to be used, obviously, for the Land Use Law course. Then the real estate market analysis text for that particular course. And then for Argus, Argus Developer in Practice. So those are the... Uh, four, I guess, uh, primary books that are going to be used, and I, and I think your book I left out and I didn't have a copy of it. So five books for this semester, okay? All right. Let's see. Anything else here I need to mention? Okay, one more thing that I um, provided you with. 
This is a listing of all, or not necessarily all, but a good number of the real estate development focused books that are available in our library here on this campus. And our business librarian, Susan Burton, will come up in a little bit and tell you um, a little bit more about the resources the library can provide. But this is a good list that if you start sort of looking down this list and some of the different topics, you know, these are things that maybe, you know, whether or not there's anything assigned for a particular course or not, for you to maybe say, hey, you know, there's this great book on, you know, I don't know, casino development. You know, I want to go check that out. Okay, so that opportunity obviously is, is available to you. Okay, and I'm almost done here. And one of the things uh, that you know, we're trying to do as much as we possibly can is you know, to help you out with your future employment needs and your sort of career growth and that sort of thing. So anything that you think that we can be providing you um, that you think would be of assistance to you, let both myself and Matt Rossi know and we'll try to see what we can put together. Or if there's a particular conference that you're aware of that maybe we haven't mentioned for whatever reason, let us know. We'll see what we can do. Maybe work, we might be able to work out a deal where we even get a discounted rate for us to be able to go and we can potentially pay for us to go. All right? So those are other things to possibly consider. Um, how many of you, just out of curiosity, are potentially interested in this Latin American conference in this room? Okay, so good number. All right. Because what we'll do is, is probably, I'm going to have at the conclusion of today, those of you that are seriously interested in it will go ahead and take your names and then potentially go ahead and get you registered for it. And as I said, we've got nine spaces and, and hopefully get everybody that wants to do that and settle with that. All right. Um, I've got pretty much everything. Now, one of the things that we're going to be experimenting with this semester to see how it goes, um, this is our first time to do this, but since we're here in this building and um, we've got food service on the first floor um, with Einstein's, we are going to try, starting next week, in giving you effectively a voucher for your food, okay? And so we'll be picking up your tab for lunch, is what I'm saying, okay? Now, there will be probably some details associated with that that we'll be working out, but the idea is we'll give you a voucher that supposedly will be limited to $7.50, which you know, should cover a sandwich and that sort of thing to, to get you through the day. Um, we'll see how this goes. It's kind of an experimental uh, sort of program, and if it continues to work out well, then that way that would help to facilitate keeping you here in the building without you having to necessarily go out, try to grab lunch somewhere, and then get back here and, and deal with all of that sort of nonsense, okay? Um, so keep that in mind. Uh, I think that's pretty much all the things I think that I needed to uh, mention. Um, just a couple of other little things, um, as Professor San Miguel can also sort of attest to, please be on time. Okay, whenever our classes start at 8 o'clock, they start at 8 o'clock, not 8.15, not 8.30, they start at 8 o'clock, okay? And, you know, this is, you know, one of those sorts of things that from an instructor's perspective and also is, you know, out of respect to whether it's guest speakers that we have coming in, out of respect to your fellow students, out of respect to us, um, you know, this is the, the, the sort of thing that, you know, can be problematic of people, you know, thinking, well, it's okay to show up at 8.15 or 8.30, make sure you are here on time. And the same sort, of, same sort of thing goes for breaks and lunches. If we tell you it's a 10-minute break, it is a 10-minute break. It is not a 30-minute break, okay? You know, I know that sounds very basic and, and kind of, uh, you know, uh, maybe a, a little bit odd, but, you know, that is a, a, an issue that we have had, and otherwise I wouldn't be bringing it up, okay? So, you know, please keep that in mind, you know, the same sort of thing that well, I'm sure we'll be taking note of about cell phones and, and kind of, um, you know, technology distractions. Each instructor kind of has their own preferences as it relates to those sorts of things. So please keep that in mind as we kind of move forward. Okay. So, any other sort of general questions before I kind of turn it over? Yep. In reference to the syllabus, you yep. said the instructor-specific syllabus would be available. And that is actually going to be one of the next things we do after we um, talk about the, the, the library. I've each of the instructors syllabi for this semester, they have copies of them, they're going to be distributing them, and then talking about their specific course. Okay. Okay, yep. Um, 
how many hours in regression uh, student needs in a week to It depends on the course. Totally depends on the course. Some courses are set up where, like for example, the, the development strategy course that I will be teaching, there is really no preparation that you have to do prior to coming to class. You show up, you listen, you write down the, your notes about what happened during that class, type them up, put it in the written blog, and edit it, you're done, okay? Other courses, there's gonna be a fair amount of reading that you're gonna have to do, there's going to be projects that may be assigned, you know, so it's, it's a course by course specific sort of thing. Um, but I would expect that, yeah, you're going to have to put in a few hours every single week before each of the courses. Now, the way that they are set up, you'll take note, is they meet every other week. So, that for example, next week, Mark Troen's development class starts. Um, you won't see him again until two weeks later. So you've got some time to do the things that are necessary to complete his requirements for his course. In the intervening time, you've got the law course that you'll be doing, okay, if you're going full time. Yes, please. Are there going to be any audience response system used at all, like clickers or anything like that? We have not done that, um, and you know, we will be utilizing probably the um, the survey system for things outside of class, but as far as our clickers in, in, in class, our classes are small enough, it's not usually an issue. We, we have an old-fashioned system, and that's like raising your hand and cursing <laughs> <laughs> Okay, other, other questions? Okay. Yep. This might be, oh, sorry. Uh, okay, that's okay. Uh, you. Oh, I'll go. That's just a statement for those students that, that's running a PC-based uh, computer uh, that's going to be running the software for like Argus, make sure that you have the correct requirements to run that software because you may be a 1.5 gigahertz or 2. Yeah, and, and you know those. Are, <coughs> excuse me. Those are the sorts of things that, that will hopefully get you your access to the software before the semester begins. That's one of the reasons why I pushed that course into the second half of the fall is so that you know we can get all those technology issues worked out before we actually start. Yes, sir. Uh, this might be a question for the instructors, but are we going to have assignments due before the first day of class? Yeah, oh, yes. on the first day. Okay. Yes, yes, yes. Okay. <laughs> and that's one of the things that, once again, each instructor will kind of you know, get into that. Um, and all of that information, like, for example, my suspicion is that after today, Mark will probably be sending out his syllabus to everyone, which will not only include this group, but then a couple of the continuing students that will also be taking his course, um, that information via email so that you guys can get started. Okay? Yep. Are there any... Uh there going to be any group work? In the Absolutely. Group? There is individual work and there's group work. And the groups are, once again, it's at the discretion of the instructor. Some instructors choose to let you self-select who your group members are. Other instructors assign it randomly. Other instructors assign it based upon skill sets that they perceive would be you know, a good match. But that is all, once again, unique to that particular instructor. But you will be working in groups. There's no question about that. Okay. All right. Anything else? Yes. Um, if we go to more ULI con like conferences or whatever, because I know my boss is like heavily involved in ULI stuff. If I go with him, does that count toward any kind of credit or anything? Well, we can work that out. Like I said, on kind of a case by case basis for the real estate development strategy. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Yep. Will there be much difference in taking development strategy towards the end of the program versus right now? In the it, it, it's it's not going to be an issue. I mean, there are certain courses that sequentially make sense to take very early on. Obviously, the development process course, and then next semester, the real estate finance course. Um, but, you know, other courses, it really almost doesn't matter at what point in time in the, the, the curriculum that you take them. Now, having said that, you know, it's, it's one of those sorts of things that, you know, some of the continuing students, they're, you know, what I would sort of call out of sequence. And some of them have uh, been through the whole program without maybe having taken, or not the whole program, but maybe a semester or two without having taken maybe the intro development course as an example. And um, so for them, they're probably going to come in and they're going to be a little bit ahead because of some other courses they've taken on certain aspects. Okay. okay. But you guys are all starting off in the prescribed way that really the program is ideal for successful completion.
So that strategy course will essentially be all new students. It, it's not a mix. Of, it's a it's a mix. It is a mix. Yeah. Okay. All right. Any others? Yep. Oh, sorry. Um, it looks like the cruise overlaps the last day of one of these. You get back at um, 7 a.m. in the morning here in Fort Lauderdale, and so you've got time to go home and get changed and then get back here. Okay. <laughs> 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 or you get showered before you get off the ship. Okay, so that, that, that's the one of the online classes is not going to overlap? No, it's not the online, it's, it's my course. It's I, I, I'm going on the cruise with you, so I've got to be back that Saturday as well. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, I read something online about classes in Miami. Is that Kindle or Brickle? Is no. It, um, starting in January of this next year, we will be offering courses in downtown Miami on Tuesday, Thursday evenings. Might that change mentors and other things? Yes. Okay. More of a Miami mix? Yes. Okay. We will also um, be starting on a limited basis in Palm Beach as well in January. What's Miami location? We are sti we're still in the process of, of selecting. We uh, right now it looks like it's going to be the Wolfson Center, which is um, downtown. Um, but we we were also working on a really interesting deal of being embedded within Little Havana um, to work on um, some redevelopment projects there. So there's a, there's a lot of things swirling there. Let's put it that way. So basically, if we want to take a course, can you pick what campus we want to take courses at? To a certain extent, yes. Okay. And you know, once again, we'll have to deal with that on a case-by-case -case basis. Okay. But the way that the curriculum is set up, it is set up for you to be exclusively here. In this main At the main campus, yes. All courses are now offered in this building. Okay. We were offering courses in downtown Fort Lauderdale, but as of this semester, everything will be here for this course or this program, okay? All right, other questions? I was just thinking about the, um, the different um, associations yep. that were offered to us as students. Yep. How soon will we get feedback on so we What we're gonna be doing is actually starting this next week, Matt and I um, will be going through your specific responses to which of the professional associations you are most directly interested in and our goal is to potentially give you the memberships that we will pay for out of the program budget for potentially your top two choices. If we have enough money, we might build the top three, but at least, you know, the top two. Okay. A related question. That survey had some very definitive questions that were programmatic. At what point are you going to be uh, correlating the results to individuals there? Anything specific you want to know about? Um, that was one of them right okay. there. Uh, the other one would be um, things like uh, part-time work, full-time work, yep. internship. Yep. No, Matt will be in contact based upon your response to that. But for example, if you said that you wanted a internship, he'll be in contact with you about that. Okay. okay. Matt is going to be taking on the role of really um, what I would sort of call concierge sort of career guidance and assistance. That is really going to be, you know, his role to help you out with that and get you, you know, in the door to talk with different folks, whether it's on an internship basis, whether it's paid or unpaid, or potentially looking for um, new employment altogether. Okay? All right, other questions? Okay, well, I think my time is up. Um, and at this point, it looks like we've got scheduled a little bit of a break. And then uh, after that, then I think Susan Burton is going to talk about the, the library. So if you want to during the break, obviously, get some of the bathroom break. Um, also, maybe get a chance to kind of walk around the room. And if you haven't had a chance to meet your other fellow new students, please do that. Uh, other, one, 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 one. Um, my feeling, and I'm sure some of my peers here may feel the same, that we so much appreciate your hands-on approach and how you're very student-centered. Makes a difference, and we appreciate it. Very appreciate it. Thank you. Okay, well, let's take a quick break and then uh, come back, and then Susan's going to tell us about the library. Uh, That's your book. Your um, class?